How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Bailey and in today's video I'm going to do a slightly different video. Previously I've done five things I hate but today, seeing it's Valentine's Day and it's really raining outside, I'm going to do five things I love about my BMW 3 Series. If you watched last week's video you'll know that I said I would be doing my skirts or spats installation today from KSB Auto Styling. Um, if you haven't seen last week's video where I install my low line front splitter, click the top right of the screen and um, you can watch that there. Yeah, the rain and the wind is not ideal today for filming outside. So for obvious reasons, I won't be doing that today. So I can get away with staying in the car and talking to you and doing a little video. So for these five points I'm gonna make that I really like about my car, they're gonna obviously differ from yours. So leave me a comment down below if you agree or disagree with these. Like I said, these, these will differ to yours. So some of them are gonna be based on my experiences and some will be generalized as BMWs as a whole, if that makes any sense. So without rambling on, let's get into number one. And starting with number one, for me, and for a lot of other people who probably own an E92, or any other BMW for that matter, it's just my personal preference, is gonna be the looks, the exterior looks of this car. Ironically, before I owned this car, I was never a massive BMW fan, as a lot of my mates who are watching this will know. But when I was, after my Mark II Focus ST, started having some issues, and I, I, at the time I was considering to sell it anyway before these issues came about, um, I was gonna sell the car and buy something that's economical, relatively, you know, just try and get a car that's nice and reliable, which again, I'll mention on that in a minute as well. And obviously something that looks nice as well. So when I was browsing, I started to go on the BMW side of things, which I don't know how I got onto that side, because like I said, I was never a massive fan of them, but now I guess you could say I am, I do love this car. But yeah, the looks of this car, the E92s have always stood out to me most, the coupes, I think they look best. I've had a few mates that have had them. Um, and when I see them around town and stuff, they catch my eye more than, let's say, a saloon or a estate, but that's just my opinion. Um, they're not as practical as the estates, but in terms of looks, I prefer the sleekness of them, the low, low profile of the car. And um, it's the fact on how good these cars look from standard as well. You don't really have to do anything to them, and they still look like a smart, sporty looks, business class, or, you know, I, I guess you could, you could touch on luxury side of cars as well. They cater for all those sort of people. And so still on to the point of looks, I'm going to touch on to cosmetic options as well, because obviously for my channel, I like to do as many installations as I can, cosmetic and performance wise. But um, staying on cosmetics, there's a lot of possibilities you, you have for this car. There's so many options online, splitters, boot lids, skirts, uh, lights, grills, and it just, the list goes on. Even in the engine bay, there are a few things you can get for this car, not as much as you could on the Focus. There's still a lot of products and options for this car. What I'll do now, I'll just insert a few quick shots um, from my cinematics I did in the last week's video where I installed my front splitter. So as you can see, the car does look nice. I Personally, I've got a thing for black cars as well. Once they're washed and they've got a nice amount of uh, cosmetics to complement all the angles and the shapes of the car, they look really aggressive and mean. Right then, so moving on to number two, I'm gonna be talking about the interior design luxury. I guess you could say the interior looks of the car. As much as the outside of a car could look nice, I feel like the inside has to be just as nice to complement it. There's nothing worse than having a really nice outside but you get in and it's all bland and boring and it's not really a nice place to be. It's nice to appreciate the car from when you're inside it just as much as looking at it from the outside. So please excuse the muddy car that needs a wash, uh, Hoover rather. What BMW do really well is they don't really cheap out on interior materials or exterior for that matter. It's all um, nice soft touch material. It's all got some sort of nice design on it. And the fact that they use genuine, I, I, I guess it's aluminium, but it's, it's real metal. It's really cold to the touch and it's all textured. It sets off the car really nicely. Um, obviously some car manufacturers i'm going to refer back to ford they do cheap out a little bit i guess you could say a really good example is the mark III focus rs everyone really really lo loves the car it's got a lot of potential but in my opinion when you're sat in the car i've not sat in one but from what, what i've seen it looks like you're in a transit van a high spec transit van um i'm not even trying to take the piss it sort of does because it's all kind of if you watch videos of people on the inside of the car, because it's, it's a car I've considered before, you, you touch it and it's all creaking, it's all kind of moving around, makes some weird noises and it doesn't look too nice. But the interior design of this car is set up really nicely. All the contour lines contrasted well with the different shades of metal and it just looks really tidy. 
back seats, all the seats are leather, and I've got a seat cover on this one. I work on a building site, so I've kept that on there for the time being. It's convenient with all the storage compartments. You've got rear climate control for those who are sat in the back. Storage everywhere, basically. And it's just the simple touches like this, the door cards. When I first got on the cars, I thought, oh, that's pretty crap. Where's, well, there's no real access for my door cards, but it's just the little things like this. You slide it open, put what you want in there, and then it's out the, out the way again. So in terms of your interior tech, you've got hands-free, you've got voice control buttons here, you've got front heated seats, you've got Bluetooth so you can play your music through your phone, and it's all set out really nicely in front of you. And this model also comes with cruise control and electric seats. Um, also, these seats are really, really adjustable. Again, onto the interior luxury side, you can get yourself proper comfy. Okay, moving on to number three, this is gonna be a quick and easy one. It's gonna be fuel economy and cars efficiency. This being a two litre diesel, it's really good on fuel. I'm currently sitting at 36.2. I'd usually be getting 39. I've only just reset it, so it will slowly climb up. A few months ago, I did a work-related trip up to Plymouth, which is about a two hour drive from me, and I saw 56 to the gallon, which is absolutely crazy. I often stick about 20 quid of fuel in and that lasts me for the whole week, which is really, really good. I'm used to sticking in 50 pound a week in my old Mark II Focus ST and I'd still need to top up now and again throughout the week. So fuel efficiency is amazing in this car. Okay, moving on to number four. This one is the one I said would be slightly controversial and that is gonna be reliability. So when it came to me buying this car, as I said at the start of the video, I wanted something economical and reliable. I did my research, I learned what engines suffer from certain issues, and this car having the N47 means it could suffer from some potential common issues. The car's only done 72,600 miles, which is definitely low in terms of other people's 320Ds of this year. Uh, I think this car's 10 years old. But as of yet, this is gonna be my, my experiences. I have had no issues whatsoever at all, literally nothing at all, nothing wrong with it. Um, I'm gonna consider doing the swell flap delete, however I'm considering buying without giving too much away and considering buying another BMW in a few months time, possibly, which is gonna be on the sporty side of things, let's just say that. I've had this car for about, when did I get this car? I think I got this car in September or October. It might even be November, around, is it getting into the winter months I've, I got this car and nothing at all. I love this car, it has been so reliable for me. Starts first time every morning, no rattles, no squeaks, nothing at all. I'm in a lot of the Facebook pages and unfortunately I see every day people have got some bad issues, some that require a lot of money to sort out, some that require not so much money to sort out. So I count myself lucky at the minute, touch wood, this car stays reliable until I choose to get rid of it. So moving on to number five, my fifth and final point of today's video is going to be the build quality of the car, which this speaks for, I guess you could say, all BMW models or the majority of BMW models. I'm sure there's some BMWs out there that people say the build quality is lacking compared to other models. But from my experience in this car, the build quality is absolutely brilliant. Again, comparing to my previous Ford, I know I keep doing that, but obviously it was my previous car, so it was a good comparison for me. And for anyone watching at home, who obviously a lot of people, a lot of my subscribers are gonna be Ford fans. Um, and I know some of them are now BMW fans, so this is kind of valid towards those people. This car being on 72,000 miles is the exact same as what my ST was pretty much before I sold it. I think my ST was on 70,000 miles. So if I compare the interior rattles and squeaks and panels all moving around, this has nothing, whereas my Mark II Focus ST would rattle like crazy, but in the ST's defense, I did stick a ridiculous Section 18 turbo back exhaust system on it, which caused a lot of resonance and caused a lot of panels to slightly move due to vibration of the exhaust tone. But even before that exhaust was fitted, you'd push panels and you'd hear them like creaking and things would move, but this is all solid. All the stitching looks good. Um, I guess you could say that's build quality in a sense, detail quality. Another one that's important to me, sound is really important to me in the car. So in terms of build quality of the speaker setup, if you have this at quite a high volume, not to the point of distortion, obviously I'm not trying to do anything stupid, you often hear door cards rattling and the speakers farting after a while. My ST slightly started to do that, as well as my previous cars before that, but this, no issues at all with the speakers yet. It sounds crystal clear, nothing's rattling. Um, it sounds like the faces of the speakers are still all intact, none of the glue is separated yet. 
which frequently happens in cars over the years. So this BMW being an M Sport, it's gonna come with the M Sport brake suspension and anti-roll bar, so it gives it that tight feeling and it, it really does feel tight. I have to admit, this car around bends and general driving does feel much, to be honest with you, it feels a lot sportier in terms of how it feels planted on the road compared to my standard Focus ST. I'm gonna emphasize the fact of standard because I never lowered my car. I didn't put any sort of uprated uh, drop links, anti-roll bars or suspension on it. So I'm sure if I did, I would be saying this differently. I'd probably say the ST felt better with aftermarket parts. But as of a standard car, this being M Sport again, this feels much more tight and the quality is much nicer on the road, in my opinion. So still on build quality, I'm gonna mention rust, especially the underside of the car. Fords are really known to rust pretty bad. Um, a good example is the Mark III Focus RS. I'm in a few forums because I considered buying one. And people are saying theirs are already really, really rusty from the underside and there might only be a 17 plate, which isn't too great. I suppose BMW take a little bit more care or have a bigger budget to supply better protective materials and coats on the underside of cars before they leave the factory. Whereas this car, without, I guess I can't really show you right now because it's pissing it down. But just take my word for it, this car is really, really clean underneath. There's literally no rust at all, apart from some under tray bolts, which clearly aren't stainless steel. And my last point on build quality is gonna be seats. Often in cars I've had before, whether it's my own car, work car, you go around a corner and you can feel the seats, they have a little bit of play in them now, and they squeak like crazy. After 70K in this car, I've got no issues at all. Let me know, are you on like 100,000 miles? Are yours starting to squeak yet, or are yours still good? because that's one of my pet hates in cars, is when you go around the corner and you can hear the actual frame of the car squeaking like mad and it's got a little bit of play in it, but as of yet, this car is absolutely sound. So guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up there. They're my five points. The main things I love and like most about this car um, is kind of to make up for the five things I hate that I've mentioned previously on my channel. So if you wanna watch that video as well, the five things I dislike most, click on the top right of the screen and I'll put the link up there for you. So leave me a comment down below. Do you love these just as much as I do? Or is there anything else you prefer more than the points I've made today? Or do you disagree on some of the points I've made today? Once again, I apologise. It's not an install video today. As I said, it probably would be. As you can see, the weather outside is really, really bad. So I didn't really want to be out on my back fixing uh, skirts sort of into the car today. But fingers crossed, next week it's going to be nicer so I can do it on that weekend. I thought making a five things I love video was pretty suiting for the fact it's Valentine's Day as I'm as single as it gets, to be honest with you. So if you're like me, give the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you like what you saw today. Once again, leave me a comment down below and I will see you next week. Peace.